This video is part of Monopoly. In it, I'll discuss profit maximization for a monopolist. Like all firms, monopolies maximize profit by producing the quantity where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. Unlike perfectly competitive firms, though, a monopoly's profit maximizing problem has a trade off between price and quantity. That is, the monopoly can choose price, but the higher the price it charges, the lower the quantity demanded, and so the higher the price the monopolist charges, the less it will sell. That's the trade-off between price and quantity that a monopolist faces that a perfectly competitive firm did not. To look at this problem in more detail, let's consider marginal revenue. Marginal revenue, like all other marginals, is a derivative. It's the derivative of total revenue with respect to the quantity the firm sells. Total revenue, remember, is price times quantity. In perfect competition, this price was a constant set by the entire market. In monopolies, on the other hand, the price is set by the firm and is a function of the quantity the firm is going to sell. So here we have the derivative of total revenue with respect to quantity, where total revenue is the price as a function of the quantity times the quantity. To do this derivative, we're going to use the product rule. We take the price as a function of quantity times the derivative of quantity with respect to quantity plus quantity times the derivative of price as a function of quantity with respect to quantity. This simplifies to become MR or marginal revenue equals price plus the derivative of price with respect to Q times Q. I'm going to show you an example, but in this equation, price as a function of quantity is the monopolist demand curve. DP DQ is the derivative of this demand curve. For example, suppose the monopolist faces a demand of P equals 240 minus Q. For this demand curve, let's derive the marginal revenue function. Marginal revenue equals price, here 240 minus Q, plus the derivative of P with respect to Q, here DP DQ is a minus 1, times Q. So marginal revenue in this example is 240 minus Q minus Q or 240 minus 2Q. Observe here that the slope of marginal revenue is double the slope of the demand. Specifically here, DMR DQ is a minus 2, whereas DP DQ was a minus 1. Whenever demand is linear, the slope of marginal revenue will be double the slope of demand. I'm going to write that out in more general terms. In general, we can write demand as price equals A minus BQ. This is the equation for a linear demand curve. For any linear demand, marginal revenue will have the same intercept and double the slope as the demand curve. So when P equals A minus BQ, marginal revenue is A minus 2BQ. I now want to explain the intuition of this equation that marginal revenue equals price plus DPDQ times Q. For this intuition, let's consider a simple chart. On this chart, in the first two columns, I present a basic demand schedule, that is, some values of quantity and price off of a demand curve. This chart shows that if the monopolist charges a price of 100, the quantity demanded will be 1, and so the monopolist will sell 1 unit. Total revenue is always price times quantity, so at a price of 100 and quantity of 1, total revenue is 100. In order to sell a second unit, the monopolist has to cut the price. Now each of the two units is sold at a price of $98, 
for a total revenue of 98 times 2 or 196. To sell three units, price has to cut, be cut once again to $96 for a total revenue of 96 times 3. You can see similar calculations for the total revenue for quantities 4 and 5. The fourth column of the chart shows average revenue calculated by taking total revenue and dividing it through by Q. What I want you to see is that for every value of Q, average revenue found by taking total revenue and dividing by Q is always the same as price. Price and average revenue are the same. This is the same idea as discussed in the perfect competition videos behind saying demand curves are average revenue. Demand was average revenue in perfect competition. Demand is also average revenue in monopoly. To look at marginal revenue or the additional revenue generated from selling an additional unit, we're going to go row by row and calculate the change in total revenue when there's a change in quantity. From a quantity from 1 to 2, total revenue goes up from 100 to 196, which is a change in 96. From 2 to 3 units, total revenue goes from 196 to 288, or an increase of $92. In selling the fourth unit, total revenue goes up by $88. And in selling the fifth unit, total revenue goes up by $84. What I want you to see right now is that unlike average revenue, marginal revenue is not price. Specifically, marginal revenue is less than price. We can see that as well from the equation if you remember one important thing, and that is that dp dq is negative. Demand is downward sloping, the law of demand holds, so there's a negative relationship between price and quantity. That is, anytime the monopolist wants to sell another unit, it has to cut the price. Marginal revenue is therefore price plus something that's negative, which leads us to conclude that marginal revenue is less than price, which is exactly what the chart is showing. Again, for every row, marginal revenue is smaller than price. Why is that? Let's take it row by row and understand how the monopolist total revenue is really changing and why. When the monopolist wants to sell the second unit, it has to cut the price. It was selling one unit at $100, but now to sell two units, it's, it has to cut the price to $98 for each of the two units. In terms of marginal revenue, the monopolist is gaining the $98 that it's charging on the second or new unit. So it's picking up an additional $98 by selling the second unit, the unit it hadn't been selling before, and selling that unit for $98. However, in order to sell that unit, the monopolist had to cut the price from 100 to 98. This is a $2 price decrease, and that represents lost revenue on the first unit that had been sold previously at a higher price of $100. $98 here represents the additional revenue on the additional unit, the second unit, and minus two times one represents the loss in revenue from cutting the price by $2 on the previously sold first unit. Marginal revenue is therefore less than price. Let me try to explain that again, now thinking about the monopolist selling the third unit. The monopolist had been selling two units, each at a price of $98, but to sell a third unit, the monopolist has to cut the price to $96. The monopolist is going to pick up $96 in additional revenue 
on that additional third unit. But to sell the a third unit, the monopolist had to cut the price by $2 on units one and two, the first two units that had previously been sold at the higher $98 price. So marginal revenue comes from the additional revenue from the additional unit, that additional revenue is the price charged for that unit, but then minus how much the price had to be cut times how many units had previously been sold before the price cut, giving us the result that marginal revenue is less than price. This is true as the monopolist sells each additional unit. Selling the fourth unit adds $94 to the monopolist revenue because 94 is the price charged for that new fourth unit, but the price had to be cut by $2 on the three units previously sold, giving us a marginal revenue of $88, which is less than the price of 94. For the fifth unit, the monopolist has to cut the price. The monopolist picks up $92 on that new fifth unit, but had to cut the price by $2 for the four units previously sold at a higher price of $94. Again, what I'm trying to explain is that marginal revenue is going to be less than price because marginal revenue is the price charged for the new unit, but then minus how much the price had to be cut on all the previously sold units. Let's wrap this up with a simple example where a monopolist faces the demand curve of P equals 240 minus Q, has a cost of total cost equals Q squared plus 12, and where we calculate the monopolist profit. Like all other profit maximizing firms, the monopolist will choose to produce the quantity at which marginal revenue equals marginal cost. In monopoly, marginal revenue has the same intercept as demand, but exactly double the slope. Here the slope of demand was minus one, so the slope of marginal revenue is minus two. Marginal cost is the derivative of total cost with respect to Q, here giving us a two Q. 240 equals therefore four Q, which means the profit maximizing quantity for the monopolist is 60 units. At this quantity, the monopolist then needs to decide the price it wants to charge. Monopolies are price makers, so they can choose this price, but they are still bound by what consumers are willing to pay. Here consumers are willing to pay a price that equals 240 minus Q. So price is 240 minus 60 or $180. Given this price and quantity, we can now calculate the monopolist profit. Profit is, of course, total revenue minus total cost. Total revenue here is the price of 180 times the quantity of 60, and total cost is the quantity of 60 squared plus 12. This gives us a profit of $60. The previous example can be graphically depicted by the figure presented here.